Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those new here, hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a family medicine physician and a mom of two. So I was just thinking about this today now that I have gone through the MCAT pre-med, gone through medical school, step one, step two, uh, gone through residency, gone through my specialty board exams. Now I'm finally a board certified physician. There are some things that if I look back, I wish someone had told me. I wish someone would have told me how to study better or how to study more productively. I wanted someone to t teach me how to become a better physician and the things that are actually important uh, that contribute to that. And so what kind of big sister would I be if I didn't share that knowledge with you now that I'm on the other end and that now that I can see the whole picture because in hindsight, it's 2020, right? So if you guys are interested, then keep on watching. So these tips are in no particular order. So let's start off with number one. There is actually a right way and more productive way of studying. When I was in college and even in med school, I loved to write down my notes and synthesize my own notes and then study from those notes but it was very uncommon that I would actually do test questions during my first year. So I didn't start doing questions, a lot of questions, until I started doing board studying. And the studies have shown that recall is actually what allows you to study and retain information better rather than just reading through or um, synthesizing your notes. Their studies have shown that people who do more test questions and learn from those test questions are the ones who actually do better on the standardized test. Uh, if you guys have gone through medical school, have gone through even taking the MCAT, you guys know that standardized testing is not a good representation of who you are as a person or how well you will be as a doctor. It just tests on your test taking skills. So for me, English was my second language. So I felt like it was really hard to take these test questions because I was trying to understand the question stem at the same time figuring out the second ordered questions and then coming up with the answer. And so the information might be in there, uh, but retrieving it is the hard part. And so when you do question banks and test questions over and over again, you are strengthening that recall uh, to retrieve those information. There are apps out there for spatial uh, memorization such as Anki, and I highly recommend that. I didn't use it because it wasn't out or popular when I was in med school, but there are YouTubers all over social media that have used it. I know Rachel uses it. I know Janie from Strive to Fit has videos. Claudia on Instagram has videos. And so you can totally check those videos out if you are interested in learning more about Anki. Another method to be more productive while studying is the Pomodoro method. This was developed by Francisco in the 1980s. And basically it's saying that your brain can only focus for a certain amount of time and you will focus better if you have this time limit it's kind of like exercising when you know that you only have to do burpees for 20 seconds you're going to go all out for those 20 seconds so for me now even though when i'm not studying i still try to use this method even when i edit videos and so it can take me hours to edit one video and so i say okay 25 minutes i'm gonna get as much done in this 25 minutes as i can take a five minute break and then go back to doing 25 minutes. When I do actually stick to that, I find that I edit my videos a lot faster. Um, and same thing with studying. You'll find that you get a lot done a lot faster. All right. That was a long one. Uh, tip number two, I wish someone told me to invest more in my uh, social networks. What I mean by that is I wish I studied more with friends and hung out more with friends in college and in med school. I find myself over stressing about things and finding that I felt too behind and I felt guilty if I was holding other people behind. But what I found is that people who work together not only boosts their morale, but they also boost their productivity and even their test scores. If you think about it, if you're asking each other questions, you're looking at the material in so many different viewpoints. Um, 
because as a med student it's hard to personally think of yourself like what is important about this information what do you think that the preceptor or your attending or the teachers are going to test you on so when you have multiple brains asking each other questions asking them in different ways your brain kind of adapts to that and learn in so many different ways and so I think it'd be really beneficial to you know invest in those groups because it's important to have that sense of community especially going through something so difficult like med school and residency which leads me into my third tip I wish someone told me that I should go to counseling <laughs> Like take advantage of the free counseling that they offered in college and in medical school because I feel that everybody goes through trauma. I feel that counseling not only helps with your mental health, but helps with productivity. Because if you know that studying is so connected to your mental health, if you're not feeling well, it's difficult to concentrate. You might feel foggy. You could feel fatigued. You can have lack of motivation. So many contributing factors of your mood into how well you do in school. So take care of yourself first, take care of your own mental health. and it's okay to ask for help. Tip number four, I wish someone would have told me to start a second brain sooner or learned about the concept of starting a second brain. If you guys don't know, Tiago Forte developed this method of basically an online digitized notebook that saves all your information that you feel that is important so you can access it later on and be more creative with that work if you guys know that i love my bullet journal i started it in med school just because i like pen to paper and it was a good organization skill for me like it gave me space to be creative at the same time it dealt with my task and it was also a place where i took all my notes and so now like when I look back at some of the notes from med school and stuff, I'm just like, damn, I was learning a lot of stuff and this is really good stuff here. Or like moments of realization or that like wow moment, I have them documented in this paper form. But I feel like if they were digitized and if I can connect them to bigger pictures in life, then it would be easier for me to create things or link things that I can then share to other people. I have you guys ask me all the time about articles or references and I read all the articles all the time, but I don't save them and I don't highlight things anywhere or synthesize things anywhere that is easily shareable to others. And so I feel like I want to start doing that. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I've been trying, I said that I'm trying <laughs> to figure out Notion. Um, but I haven't figured it out yet, mainly because I haven't figured out a system in which I want to like outline my second brain. So once I figure that out, I feel like I would use Notion. Um, so we will see. Tip number five, I wish I remembered people's names. I think I recently read a book called um, Making Friends and Influencing People or something like that. And basically what the book was saying is that a name is so unique to an individual and when you say a person's name you have created a deeper connection between you and that other person you remember someone's name and then then at the end of the visit you say their name again or like during the visit you say their name multiple times um, it creates this deeper connection with your patients which then builds up rapport and then your patients are more likely to listen to your advice because there is that trust there so the simplest thing as in saying someone's name can make that much of a difference I wish that I continued reading for fun. I know what you guys are all saying. You're going to think, Jenny, you want me to study for my exams like at the MCAT or study in med school and work out and clean my house and feed myself and be presentable to go to school or Zoom or whatever? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and the reason why I say this is because 
I know life could be busy, but it's so important to make time for yourself. And I feel like privilege occurs to people who have resources, not only to meet people in power and to learn from people of higher education, but reading is the same way. And I feel like only after residency did I have all this extra time and I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna listen to all these audiobooks and learn so much more from all these people who have been so much more smarter than me. And so I feel like even after residency, I have changed so much because of the things that I'm reading. So I've made a list on my Instagram highlights of all the books that I've read so far. And it is truly like changed my perspective on life, made me feel a lot happier. If you guys want me to talk to to talk more about books that I've read or been reading or synthesize some for you, do, do leave that in the comment section below and maybe that's a video that I can possibly do in the future. I wish that I understood more about politics and you may think of how this can help you become a better doctor. Let me explain. So as a doctor, you're gonna see everybody, at least I think you're gonna see everybody, I do. I see everybody from every social economic class. I see young people, newborns, to people in their 90s. I saw a lady who was 101. Um, and you're gonna see poor people, you're gonna see rich people, you're gonna see uh, anorexic people, you're gonna see obese people. You're gonna see so many people in between. And there is so much more to medicine than just knowledge base you have to have that human experience and you have to have um, basically life experience to connect with your patients. As I said previously, when you connect with someone, when someone trusts you and you build that rapport with them, they're more likely to listen to what you have to say and more likely to follow your advice. As a doctor, I'm not trying to make anyone take any medications. I'm not trying to make anyone change their lifestyle. I'm just here to give you the most evidence-based advice and then you take that information and you do what you want with it to change your life, either to take medication or to be more active or change your lifestyle. So it's a relationship. That being said, it's hard to connect with somebody when you don't understand the struggles that they go through. And this is called empathy. Like you need to have empathy for your patients. Understanding politics, understanding how laws are made and how it benefits some and puts a lot of others at a disadvantage will make you a better doctor. And so I grew up uh, with a single mom and um, grew up, you know, very poor, had financial aid uh, in a very poor social economic class. And so these are the patients that yeah, I already have an automatic connection to because I understand where they're coming from. And it's still heartbreaking when I hear patients say that they have food insecurities in a first world country, but it gives me this connection to them and they trust me in order to help them change their lives. And so you will make more of an impact. If you haven't learned about implicit bias um, and how that affects patient outcomes, I highly recommend you taking like the Harvard study. I believe it's like the Harvard uh, implicit bias test. And I'll link another video that I have made about how to become a better doctor and addressing implicit biases. So those are all my tips. I hope you guys found this video helpful and useful. Um, apply some of these tips to your own life and let me know how it goes. I love connecting with you and getting to know you guys in the comment section below. If your title thing does not have your full, your real name, like if you don't mind, you don't have to give me your first and last name, but I love knowing people's names. So saying like your name will really help me feel more connected to you. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.